Hi, Hi guys. guys! My name is Bibba and I'll be a freshman at the University of Pennsylvania School of Engineering and Applied Science in the fall. And my name is Ashley and I'm an incoming freshman at Princeton University. Today, we're here to break down everything you need to know about the University of California's college application system. And while we may not have ended up committing to University of California schools, otherwise referred to as UC schools, we definitely have a lot of experience applying to them. I applied to UCLA and I was admitted. And I applied to UCLA and UC Berkeley and was admitted as well. When you apply to any of the UC schools, you are automatically considered for that school's Regents and Chancellor Scholarship. I was personally offered the RNC Scholarship from University of California, Berkeley. UC Berkeley's Regents and Chancellor Scholarship system is the largest out of the UC system. You're automatically considered for the RNC if you submit an application, and about the top 1% of incoming freshman applicants will be invited to continue this process. This is about 800 to 900 kids, and in the end, about 200 kids receive the RNC scholarship. The RNC scholarship has a lot of benefits. I'll quickly summarize them here. This includes priority class enrollment, having a faculty mentor, having about $1,000 in renewable research funding every year, guaranteed housing, and most importantly, generous financial aid, even if you are an out-of-state or international applicant. In this video, I'll be sharing tips that may have helped me secure that Regents and Chancellor's Scholarship, as well as reading one of my UC essays. But if you'd like more info on the Regents process or a more in-depth review of my UC application, feel free to check out my blog at www.inreachprep.com. Now, back to Viva and me. You can't apply to these schools through the Common or the Coalition app. Instead, you're going to need to use the UC's exclusive application portal. One thing to note is that you'll only fill out the application once. At the end, you're going to select all the campuses you want to apply to, and it will send it all together. Hi! So we're going to lead you through the UC portal, and as we go along, we're going to emphasize some of the differences between it and the Common App. So we're going to start just by putting in your email address and making your password pretty basic stuff for making an account. So. Once we're in, you're going to want to select your appropriate semester slash quarter you're applying to. Uh, most of you guys are going to be applying to the fall semester of 2021. Uh, and keep in mind that that application only opens November 1st to November 30th, when you can input information directly into the system. Hence why it says 2020 right now. So even though you can only input your demographic information, um, your activity list and your essays between that time frame, that doesn't mean you shouldn't start writing your activities list, your awards list, and your personal insight questions or your essays much earlier. Another really important thing just to remember is that this does operate on Pacific Standard Time. So for us here, you do have until 2.59 to submit your things. <laughs> it is an 11.59 p.m. deadline for people in California. So when you start filling out your application, the first part you're going to fill out is your About You section. This is basically just personal information and demographic stuff. Pretty basic. The one really important thing is the Citizenship and Residency section, because this is how they know if you're an in-state or out-of-state applicant. You need to do this before you can choose your campuses or your majors. After you fill out your demographic information, you're going to want to choose which campuses you're applying to. Also in this section, you're going to want to agree to the UC's value statement, which essentially is like an anti-cheating statement. So you're going to go in to choose campuses and you're introduced to this lovely, wonderful map. So you can choose how many schools that you'd like to apply to, and keep in mind that the same application will be sent to every school you check. If you are an international applicant, it costs $80 to apply to a school, $70 if you are a domestic. Once you choose what campuses you want to attend, you'll next choose your majors. So you do have the option of choosing different majors for different schools, and some will let you choose one or even two. It really depends on the school, so make sure you're being careful. So the next section you're gonna wanna hit is academic history. This is essentially your transcript, all the way from seventh grade to your present day senior year. All right, click through this. Then you're going to wanna select where you attended high school. 
pick your territory. And enter your high school. So the next part you're going to fill out is just some uh, information about your school and how long you were there. After you fill out some information about your high school, you'll choose which grading system you're on. For many high schools, if you're not on the IB program, you can either select between a 0 to 100 or an A, B, C, D, F. This is where you can get a little bit strategic. For example, if you have some A minuses on that transcript, you don't have to report them. Instead, you can just select an A, B, C, D, F option with no pluses or minuses. However, if you'd really like to emphasize the specific percentage that you scored in certain classes, you can select this system instead. So after you fill out information about your high school, you're going to start inputting your academic history. In other words, your grades and courses. So here it says 2016 to 2017. Obviously for you, your freshman year, if you're applying as the class of 2021, will be the 2017 to 2018. But this is just what the freshman year is for class of 2020. So you're going to go in and pick what subject area it applies to. So let's just go with Algebra 2, if that's the math you took your freshman year. And then whatever it's called, put it in. And then there's a section called Honor Type. So if you look above, there's a kind of a key which uh, for all the honors codes. So AP, IB, and not honors are pretty self-explanatory. For honors, for HL, which is the UC approved honors level, you can only put that if you took an honors class inside California. Out of state honors does not count as a UC approved honors level. So this for me would be not honors. Even though it was considered honors in my school because I was in school in California, I cannot put this as HL. So afterwards, you're gonna input your grade, depending on whether you select a trimester, semester, quarterly, or semester grading period, that's what's gonna reflect in how many categories here. And the rest is pretty self-explanatory. You're going to want to continue adding courses in different categories until you fill out a single academic year before saving and continuing and proceeding the same throughout multiple years of your high school. So if you took any college courses, this is a place to talk about it. So you're going to go to the colleges attended while in high school and pick add college. So again, you're going to pick where it is and pick your state. So we'll say Michigan and then put in the college and, and uh, it should pop up for you to select. So again, this is pretty much the same as when you're filling in what high school you did, except um, you'll have to pick what terms exact you attended them in. After you've finished filling out what colleges you attended, you're gonna go to this page, which is about your college courses. So you're going to pick what time and period you're talking about and select enter courses and grades. And then you're just going to fill out this area that's very similar to talking about high school courses. The next section you're going to fill out is your test scores. These are self-reported, but if you are admitted, you will need to send a copy of these scores to the UC that you're admitted to. By 2025 and beyond, the UCs are planning on eliminating SAT and ACT requirements altogether instead of replacing it by a standardized test that they themselves are creating. For the class of 23 and 24, that is the high school um, current freshmen and sophomores, the UCs will be test blind, which means scores won't be used at all in admissions. However, for the class of 22 and 21, the UCs will be test optional. This is not the same as test blind. Being test optional means that your scores still can be used in admissions decisions, and they'll be used in scholarship decisions, as well as potential placement scores for intro classes. So, if you have the capability, we recommend that you still take the ACT, SAT, and try to score competitively on them. While they're decreasing in importance, in a highly competitive admissions system, every little bit still counts. After filling out your test scores, you're going to get the activities and awards. This is where your real application starts. 
So when it comes to your activities and awards, you're gonna include them all together in one list that has a maximum length of 20. So this is 20 activities and awards together, not 20 each. So when you start inputting activities or awards, you'll see you'll have different categories from, this is essentially a fancy name for summer programs uh, or like research programs that you did, uh, awards, extracurriculars, um, courses that don't fit in those subject areas you saw a little bit earlier, community service and work experience. When choosing how to order your list of activities, you can pick any order. You don't have to put all awards at the beginning, all extracurriculars in a section, work experience in another. Instead, what Vibba and I did was that we picked what was most important of us, irrespective of their category, and moved down in importance. Some other tips in this section are don't be afraid to include things that just aren't strict, say, volunteer extracurricular activities. For example, I included my passion for art. I never took a class in art. I never had any formal instruction in art, but it was something I did in my free time. And in the activity description, I was able to justify why it was an important component of my application. Keep in mind too that the UC does not allow you to submit supplements, whether they be music, art, research, um, or dance supplements. So you're going to want to include that in your activity list, um, but don't try to get creative and submit your supplement uh, directly to your regional admissions officers. They specifically say you are not allowed to send supplements to these offices. So right now we're looking at if you were going to put an extracurricular activity. So as you can see, as you scroll down, there is an essay that you have to do. And basically it's talking about your experience and what you learned and what kind of impact it had on you. So there are 350 characters and this is deceptively hard. Although it may look pretty short, you wanna explain what you did, what kind of impacts you had and whether you had opposite officer or leadership positions in there. So you wanna make this description as compelling as possible to accurately represent all the work that you did for this extracurricular activity. When we go to awards, so this is again slightly different. You're talking about the scope of recognition of the award at the beginning and then towards the end you have two essays. So the first is talking about the eligibility requirements. So basically um, how many people are chosen, how many people compete, if it's a competition, etc. So again you want to properly represent what's happening. In the next essay you want to talk about what did you do specifically. So how did you prepare, um, what kind of work did you have to put in, and again accurately represent the work that you put in because this is what they're seeing. Yeah, you About don't want to be cliched in this part. You want to be very specific, include hard numbers and data when you can. And most importantly, even if it's an award, drive it back to why it impacted you. Even though these seem like rather simple essays to write, like Vibba mentioned earlier, these are pretty tough. You've got to pack a lot of information, have it be well written in not a lot of space. And you have to make sure that you're putting an equal amount of effort into describing all of your activities. For me, I know this process took hours on hours. If I had to put a rough estimate, I'd say it took me about 40 minutes to craft one description per category I was filling. Uh, so definitely don't think you can procrastinate on this. You need to plan in advance for this activities sheet. So put, take out time to work on this because that's, what's gonna, that's what it's going to take to make you have a good activity list, both in order and description. Yeah. So one pitfall of procrastination often is that a lot of people end up doing it. And the downfall for that is that when you go to submit it, a lot of times the portal will crash. That's just a lot of unnecessary stress that can be prevented by doing, starting the process early. Not only will you have greater quality, but you won't be as stressed at the end. I've had some pretty bad experiences with the UC portal. I wrote my activity list uh, in advance, but of course, knowing me, I like to go in and make some last minute edits before I submit. I ended up making a few too many edits, and when it neared the deadline, when it got to midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., the portal was incredibly slow and crashing like crazy. So you don't want to be in that situation because that could have nearly cost me my application. Make your edits in advance, submit the days before, so you know that you're giving your application the best chance of making it.
Here is an example of a filled in extracurricular activity. I highlighted my work with Detroit Education Society, a nonprofit that provides supplemental education for underprivileged students in Detroit. The reason why this is my first activity is because one prominent thread I had running through my application was my passion for promoting education and the value knowledge has. I also was president of the chapter at my school for my senior year and held officer positions for my junior and sophomore years. This showed both leadership and growth as well as commitment. In my description, I kept it rather straightforward and dry. I wrote about my responsibilities and my fundraising work since that was the most relevant and recent. This was an activity I further expanded upon in a supplemental essay, so I was able to dive deeper there and explain its impact on me. One thing to note is the time commitment section at the bottom. For this, be as honest as possible. It's really tempting to say that you spent 10, 20, 30 hours a week on something, but if you keep doing that, the math just won't add up. This is definitely something admissions officers will notice. My advice, just stay honest and really put the time commitment that you had per week and per year. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I'm going to make a few notes. I chose to feature this award as second because I was the one very involved in HOSA during high school, but from 2018 to 2019, I improved my standing in this award, so I knew this award could tell a story about my work ethic. HOSA is a pretty common organization to list, and they do give out uh, quite a few awards at their International Leadership Conference. But I made sure not to have HOSA sound generic by adding how many members they had, what it took to qualify, how many competitors I was up against, and what exactly the competition consisted of. Sure, at the face value, it was just an exam and an essay. But by qualifying what exactly the essay was and how it related to topics very relevant uh, to today's healthcare system, I was able to connect it to other elements of my application, mainly my passion about improving healthcare through law. In the bottom section here, I tried to include specific numbers when possible. I tied this award back to character traits, whether that's a passion for spreading my passions to others, even if this is an individual award, as well as resilience, telling a story of how I went from second to first place. In this second sentence right here, I talk about what impact this award had on my thinking. This connection back to you doesn't necessarily always have to be a character trait, a career, or a major interest. In fact, it sounds rather trite if you keep repeating that. When you get to the essay collection of the UC application, they're called personal insight questions. There are eight prompts for you to choose from, and you'll have to write four essays of 350 words or less. There are seven specific prompts and an eighth one that's a catch-all. So when it comes to picking your essay prompts, pick things that you think that you can really talk to and that are really personal to you. That will show what you've been involved with over the last four years and explains who you are. Make sure to pick diverse experiences that you can relate back to the prompt. When it comes to writing your essays, don't be afraid to borrow um, from other supplementals or your common app essay that you've already written. Just make sure that you do edit it so it makes sense in the context of the prompt. Just remember that even if you are doing this, editing can be a pretty stressful process and it does take time. You have to manage your time well to be a successful applicant. For more general tips, check out Ashley's video on the SWE playlist. There are Common App essay tips that are applicable to the personal insight questions on the UC portal. Using those essay tips, this is the PIQ I managed to produce. I responded to the prompt, every person has a creative side. It can be expressed in many ways problem solving, original and innovative thinking, and artistically, to name a few. Describe how you express your creative side. All right, so I'm gonna jump into reading my essay now. Summer, 1963, France. Obus Marcel Taboutol told his student, quote, every note has its place in the line, but we don't worry about notes. Instead, we play between them, end quote. The advice was passed down from him to my teacher, my teacher to me. Make music. Make music in its literal absence? The advice flirts with ambiguity. And then I have a paragraph break. 
I begin to understand, however, as I play principal bassoon with the Detroit Symphony Youth Orchestra. My solo begins Tchaikovsky's final symphony. Alone, I have a few lines. Then a flute. A bird trying to be free joins me, the rain of the timpani gracing its feathers. Silhouetted by a crack of lightning from the trumpet, wings swaying beneath the violin's willows. My instrument is only part of this truth, but together we share it. Paragraph break. Creativity hangs in the air, but only when I hear what's written and what's beyond the notes. Another paragraph break. As Tabatu alluded, music's in limbo between objective and subjective. This belief grows while I'm a counselor at FAR, a music therapy camp for teens with cognitive disabilities. Person, a camper, tells me he or she sometimes feels invisible among his or her peers. Uh, obviously, I'm replacing the person's name with just person. Now in high school, teasing has subsided, replaced by being ignored. Yet singing Prince Ali, Fabulous He in our summer play, he slash she is anything but invisible. The lyrics are objectively our lines, but between them is the subjective, the connections that music makes. Music's a voice for campers, a voice for me to reach out to those that I, like my peers, once hesitated to connect with. New paragraph. How will I choose to remember this performance? With 88 piano keys in black and white succession at Carnegie Hall, my fingers like clockwork? Or perhaps it's a breath, my eyes pausing on the acanthus plastered ceiling, looking out into the dark, the moment's beauty blending into the final cadenza of Liebestrom, Liszt's composition meaning dream of love. Through a love song depicting the unconditional love I've given to music, my dedication has led me to performing my dreams. New paragraph. Both interpretations are true, but like Camp or Tchaikovsky, creativity is not about choosing either the objective or subjective. Rather, it's living between both. So I mentioned where I had paragraph breaks because I wanted to emphasize that you can include a lot of different ideas as long as they tie to the same theme. I hope me reading this essay helps you along in your planning process. Thank you guys for watching. We hope this video was helpful in finding out some basic information about the UC portal and the UC application. If you ever have any questions or need help with the UC application, the region, Regents and Chancellor Scholarship, or college applications in general, feel free to reach out to us at www.inreachprep.com. Um, if you have questions, you can also reach out to us on our Instagram, DM us personally, or DM us at in reach prep. Here at InReach, our goal is to offer you affordable help um, while supporting socially conscious causes. This upcoming summer months, we're donating 50% of our profits to Black Lives Matter organizations so you know that you can be consulting for a good cause. Thank you once again to the SWB for hosting us in this wonderful series. We wish everyone who's watching the best of luck in applying to UCs this upcoming year. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.